Welcome to this CASP and LPAC video tutorial, How to Request an Unlisted Resource. In this tutorial, we'll review the unlisted resource policies and requirements, as well as the methods used to request an unlisted resource in the Test Operations Management System, or TOMS. Before we get started, a few reminders. Unlisted resources are based on two of four assessment matrices. Matrix 1, which includes embedded and non-embedded universal tools, designated supports and accommodations for the CASP system, and Matrix 4, which displays the embedded and non-embedded universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations for the LPAC. Embedded and non-embedded accommodations are available only to students who have an Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, indicator with a valid primary disability type or a Section 504 plan in the California Longitudinal Pupil Achievement Data System, also known as CALPADS. An unlisted resource is a resource listed on a student's Individualized Education Program, or IEP, or a student's Section 504 plan which is not currently available as an approved universal tool, designated support, or accommodation on Matrix 1 or Matrix 4. Also, the CASP and LPAC require student test settings to be entered annually into the Test Operations Management System, or TOMS, by the LEA CASP Coordinator or Site CASP Coordinator. LPAC settings are entered only by LEA LPAC Coordinators or Site LPAC Coordinators. Student test settings are not retained from year to year and may change with the annual IEP update. Throughout this tutorial, we'll review both the CASP and LPAC interfaces, sometimes switching between the two. In this video, we'll primarily navigate the LPAC system. Although there are many similarities between the systems, it's important that we review how the options and procedures differ. Let's begin the process of requesting an unlisted resource by visiting the LPAC website at lpac.org and selecting the Test Operations Management System or TOMS button. Log on to TOMS using a standard web browser and your logon for the current year. If you cannot log on to TOMS, contact your LPAC or CASP test site coordinator or LEA LPAC or CASP coordinator for assistance. Remember, TOMS can be accessed on either the LPAC or CASP website. After logging on, choose your role for the current session and select OK. Using the top navigation bar in TOMS, select the Students tab to start. After selecting the Students tab, you will automatically be directed to the View and Edit Students screen. In the Search for Students web form, you may search by a student's first name, last name, statewide student identifier, known as an SSID, and grade. For this search, we'll use the student's SSID. Enter the SSID and select the Search button. Once your student's record has been located, Select the View magnifying glass icon to view the student's profile in TOMS. You will now be in the student profile. At the top of the screen, you will find six tabs. These tabs are Demographics, Test Assignments, Test Settings, Unlisted Resources, Score Status, and Reporting. Select the Unlisted Resources tab to assign or view the student's unlisted resources. There are five steps to requesting an unlisted resource for a student. Step 1 focuses on assigning pre-identified, non-embedded, unlisted resources. These unlisted resources have been previously approved by the CDE. Note, although the format of this page will be very similar between CASP and the LPAC, the available unlisted resources will differ. Here's what the CASP page will look like. Again, for this tutorial, we're focusing on the LPAC experience. Please note, the pre-identified, non-embedded, unlisted resources listed on this web page have been determined to change the construct of the test. In CASP, their use will invalidate the results. In LPAC, the student will be assigned a lowest obtainable scale score, or loss. A student score will be provided with a footnote that the test was administered under conditions that resulted in a score that may not be an accurate representation of the student's achievement. 
If the unlisted resource you want to assign does not appear on this list, your options will be detailed in steps 2 and 3. Step 1. Select the pre-identified, non-embedded resource or resources that best fit your student's needs coinciding with the test or tests for which the resources may be used. You will then select from a list of students' needs based on the student's disability type. Select the Identify Edit button to open a window with a list of the student's available needs to choose from. A student need must be selected for each unlisted resource that is requested. Step 2. If the student's required unlisted resource is not found in the list, select the Add Other Unlisted Resource button to reveal the Other Unlisted Resources table. A maximum of four unlisted resources can be submitted per student. Step 3. Select the Add button to the right of the table. The Add Edit Other Unlisted Resource pop-up window will now load. Now, follow the on-screen instructions by first selecting the Assessment and Content area for which the student will be using the Other Unlisted Resource. Then, using the checkboxes, select the student's need or needs based on the student's disability type. Finally, fill out the three question boxes. Again, the student's needs that are available to choose from will differ between CASP and the LPAC. Here's a sample of choices that would be presented if you were logged in as an LEA coordinator for CASP. What is the name of the unlisted resource being requested? How will this resource be used by a student? And why is this unlisted resource necessary? Note. Provide ample detail so the CDE has enough information to make a status determination on any other unlisted resource requests. Select the Save button at the bottom of the page. You will return to the main Unlisted Resources screen. Step 4. Check the box to affirm the unlisted resource or resources that are regularly used in the classroom by the student. Step 5. Select either the Submit button to update this student profile or the Save for Later button to return to this request later. A third option also allows the user to clear all the unlisted resources for the student by selecting the Make Inactive button. Pre-identified unlisted resources will be saved to the student profile, while other unlisted resources will be sent to the CDE for review. Upon submitting your unlisted resources, a confirmation pop-up window will load. Select the Close button to close the box. You have now requested an unlisted resource. When the CDE receives your request, you will receive one of the following statuses. Pending CDE review. Review complete. Approved test construct change. Denied security violation. Additional information required. You are supported under TOMS test settings. And finally, Approved, temporary, valid for the 2019-2020 administration. In the View and Edit Students window, you will find the different unlisted resources status options. Select a status option to find out which students are in which stage of review or filter specific CDE responses. From the Unlisted Resources dropdown, select Pending CDE Review. As you can tell, there is one student fitting these criteria. To view or edit the student information, select the View magnifying glass icon. To view comments from the CDE, select the Unlisted Resource Form icon. Once the Unlisted Resource Form icon is selected, you will be taken to this page where you will select the View magnifying glass icon again. This will create a pop-up window where you will be able to view the information you submitted to the CDE, the CDE decision status, and any comments they have made regarding the status of your request. For other unlisted resource requests, both CASP and LPAC requesters will receive an email indicating whether the request for use has been approved or denied by the CDE. For both CASP and LPAC, when a request for another unlisted resource status is marked as Approved Test Construct Change, TOMS will update the Student's Score Status tab for the content area to indicate that the student uses an unlisted resource that changed the construct of the student's test. For CASP, the test is invalidated. For LPAC, an irregularity is assigned to the test.
Thank you for watching this CASP and LPAC video tutorial. For more information, visit casp.org or lpac.org.